Hey guys, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools and DIY channel. Today we're going to learn how to measure how thick or thin your paint should be. So stick around, I'll see you right after this. So how thick or thin should your paint be, particularly house paint? That's what we're talking about in this video. Be it interior paint, be it exterior paint, be it water-based paints, also called latex or acrylics, or even oil-based paint mixes. How thick or thin should your primer be? Since primer may be the first type of paint you put on a surface, you wanna make sure that it's at least a thin coat, a thin, even coat to cover the whole area to prevent a patchy or blotchy paint job. But is a thin layer of primer enough? You may have to apply one or two coats of primer depending on how bold the previous color is, but you don't have to overdo it with too many coats of primer. As long as the primer is spread evenly over the old surface color, then one or two coats of primer should be fine. Now you can use a drop test with your mixing stick to see how the consistency of the paint is, how it falls off the mixing stick. If it falls off in globs, then you know it may be too thick. If it falls off in a watery fashion, you don't want that either. You want a smooth, creamy consistency. Now the surface also plays a role. For example, drywall or interior wood. Only need a thin, even coat of primer because the purpose of primer is to seal the drywall or to provide a surface for the top coats to stick to or adhere to. Sanding each layer of primer you lay down is also important because sanding gives the primed or prepped surface a rougher, grittier texture that gives the top coats of paint something to grab onto, like I said before. Sanding gives the primer teeth to bite into the paint. So you can take out your sanding block and get to sanding, or you can take a palm sander, orbital sander, and give it a whirl as well. So the factors to consider when it comes to how thick your paint should be is the type of paint, the surface you're painting on, and the desired finish. So the type of paint matters. Latex or water-based paints are generally thinner than oil-based paints. Think about it. Oil is thicker than water, so if you're using latex paints, you may have to apply more than one coat to get the right thickness. Now, as far as the surface, we talked about drywall and wood surfaces like kitchen cabinets, for example, earlier. They only require a thinner layer of top coat paint. But what about surfaces like stucco or brick that have a rougher texture? You're going to need a thicker layer of paint to cover all the hills and valleys, cracks and crevices on these surfaces. That means multiple coats of paint. And finally, what type of finish are you looking for? Are you looking for a high gloss finish? Well, that's gonna require a thicker coat of paint. If you're looking for a low gloss finish or a matte finish, then it won't. A thinner coat will do for those. Now, the general rule of thumb is that when paint is on a surface, it should be between a 16th of an inch to an eighth of an inch thick. The thickness of paint is measured in mils. That's short for millimeters. But how do you measure how thick a layer of paint is? Well, there's a variety of tools you can use for this, from what's called a micrometer or a caliper, even a ruler or tape measure will do. Regardless of the tool you use, just measure the layer of paint and remember to convert your result into mils or millimeters. Now, there is a device on the market called a coating thickness gauge. You see them used a lot in the automotive industry, and they work by using ultrasound technology to send a signal through the layer of paint or film, that signal then bounces off of the metal or substrate beneath the paint back to the device and a numerical value is generated on an LCD screen. Now a more common device, and I would say the most portable and convenient device for measuring paint thickness is this. It's called a wet film thickness gauge. It's about the size of a credit card and measures thickness in mils. One mil equals one thousandths of an inch. That's with the THS on the end. And that equals 25.4 microns. Now notice the numbers that border the device. They range from one to 80 in mils. The four edges of the gauge are notched, as you can see. You can also see that each notch gets progressively smaller from one end to the other as you go up in numerical value. This step-down design is what makes the device work. Now each notch has a corresponding mil value. For example, this notch equals one mil, two mil, three mil, four mil, and so forth. But if you flip it over, you'll also see that each notch has its corresponding micron value. So notch number one 
is equal to 25 microns. Notch number two is equal to 51 microns. Notch number three equal to 76 microns, all the way up to 80, which equals 2,032 microns. Okay, so which is smaller, a mil or a micron? Well, you guessed it, microns. A micron is one thousandth of a millimeter. It's also called a micrometer, which is a millionth of a meter. A human blood cell is five microns, and a strand of human hair is 100 microns. By comparison, a mil is one thousandth of an inch. Okay, so after we applied our wet paint to our surface or substrate, I'm gonna take the wet film thickness gauge and I'm gonna use the notched side that's one through six mils. I'm gonna depress it into the paint and these two ends here are gonna touch the substrate or the wood beneath the paint. Now, either all of the notches will be submerged in the paint or some may not. Remember, you wanna hold it at a perpendicular angle. Make sure it's perpendicular, okay? If it's not, you won't get a good reading. Well, we see here that all the notches have been submerged in the paint. That means we have to go to the next scale, and that scale will be seven through 12 mils. If you look very closely, even all of those notches have been submerged in the paint. So then we're going to proceed to notches 14 through 30 in mils. So it stopped between 12 and 14. There's no paint on 14. So your wet film thickness is going to be the value between your last coated notch and your first uncoated notch. So that's 12 and 14. So your wet film thickness would be 13 mil. All right guys, so we figured out what our wet film thickness is. And I know I poured it on thick because I just wanted to show you guys how this thing works. But did you know there's such a thing as dry film thickness? You can actually figure out how thick your paint is while dry. One way to do that is to look at the product data sheet of your paint. It's gonna specify what your wet film thickness is, what your dry film thickness is, and what your volume solids are. So here's an example of a product data sheet for paint. If you notice here, it has wet film thickness, dry film thickness, volume solids. The volume solid says 51%. What that means is 51% of the paint is gonna stay on the surface. The rest of it won't. So we know that our wet film thickness is 13 mil. What's 51% or 50% of 13? About six, 6.5 mil. So your dry film thickness would be six to 6.5 mil. All right guys, remember, the shorter the notch the paint touches, the thicker your paint's gonna be. It only makes sense that 80 mil is thicker paint than 35 mil because the paint has to reach up higher to reach that shorter notch. And this is very important when it comes to saving paint or wasting paint. Wasting paint means wasting money. So if your gauge is measuring more thickness than your customer wants, then you know you're wasting money. And if it's measuring less than your customer wants, then you may have to do the job all over again and I know you don't want that. So guys, that's just a few ways to measure how thick or thin your paint is and it can save you a lot of time and it can save you a lot of money. So guys, if you learned something from the video, please hit that like, subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and share the content, because I love to get it out to as many people as we can here at Calibrate. And guys, don't forget to go shop at Calibrate to support the channel. We got some great products at Calibrate.com, also underneath the video. Love you guys. See you next time.